Thanks for having me back. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Today's message is meant to be. What is meant to be? What does it mean for it to be meant to be? And I wanted to do this topic because um, something happened one day where someone was like, oh, that must have been meant to be, or that wasn't meant to be, and it just sparked to me, like, what does that mean? Something's meant to be, you're not meant to be. And as I have been formulating this, what I realized that it's really around this concept of um, spirituality in our co-creation of life. So that's what I want to talk about, being in the flow and co-creation. I think so many people are in this part of um, existence where they're not co-creating at all. They're just, they're in the flow, but they're not in the flow where they're part of. They're in the flow where it is just rushing over them, you know, and they're feeling overwhelmed by everything, and they just are gulping in the water and trying to figure out how to make it work. And those concepts where people say something is meant to be or wasn't meant to be is almost like an excuse. It's almost like a validation or an excuse of like, oh, well, he broke up with me. Well, I guess it wasn't meant to be, you know, or that something good happens. Oh, I guess it was meant to be. As if there's some preordained, predetermined thing that we're just pinballing through our life and we don't know until it happens and it smacks us and then we're like, oh, well, I guess it was meant to be. And that way of existing is incredibly painful. It, it feels overwhelming. It feels like it's too much. And in soul recovery, which is my, my ministry, my first principle of soul recovery is that we're powerless over every single thing outside of ourself. And this is such an interesting concept to say I'm powerless over everything outside of myself. And so for some people, that means that they feel like um, it's out of their hands. But what it's really saying is you are free from what everybody else and everything else is happening. Like you can't make anything, can't make the weather different, can't make your kids different, can't make your husband different. Believe me, I tried. <laughs> and so when we really take this concept and we start saying, how do I apply these spiritual principles to my life to truly understand that I'm powerless over everything outside of myself? And that is a freedom. And I can step into the flow of life by saying, I actually have co-creation and power over me. Life is not pinballing me through. I actually get to choose whether I'm going to be present and part of, whether I'm going to be connected to and participate in my life. And when we can start to do that, then we start to be in the flow then we start to be in the movement of and then we start to look at not meant to be and meant to be with new eyes in my life right now my husband and i both are self-employed and i he's been a contractor for gosh since i had my son so 27 years he's been self-employed he, he builds these incredible water features and yards and um, is in, incredibly talented. He was an architect and sat at his desk when I was pregnant with my son and come home every night and said, if I have to sit at this computer one more day, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> and you're like, oh, we're having a baby, so you should have this job, is what I'm thinking. And, oh, I didn't know we were going to go here. This is where we're going. Okay, and so he... Um, calls me on a Thursday and he says, honey, I got laid off. You got to come down because he took the bus. I got a box full of stuff in my plant, right? At that moment, that felt overwhelming. Here I was about to have a baby and he's the, you know, he's the main breadwinner and he's leaving his architect job. Like what's going to happen next? And I remember him saying, now that I think about it, he was like, it was meant to be, and mine didn't feel like it was meant to be. I felt like it was taking the rug out from under us. But he knew that he hated that job. He knew he hated that job. And he immediately went and started working with a friend of his that he had been doing some side work for and started doing stonemasonry and has never looked back. 
However, he's self-employed, which if anybody else is self-employed means it's feast or it's famine, which is a great opportunity to practice the unity principles, which I could do a whole other thing about our you know, 27 years in unity of him being self-employed and practicing those principles. But now that we're both self-employed, it allows us to be more aligned with everything that's happening and this winter he had a job that he thought was going to happen and he was really counting on it and when you're self-employed you like you get where you're counting on it and that job didn't come through and his he was really upset and i kept saying babe it wasn't meant to be and he was taking it as the pinball effect like the world is hitting me and i how what am i going to do next and how am i going to you know be okay in this situation and i just said i can tell and feel that this wasn't in alignment because it was already bumping it was already being strenuous from the very beginning and our fear makes us want to force something that isn't actually in the flow of what is right and perfect for us because we're afraid we want to make it happen. We want to be in control of what we are powerless over and we're going to force it to happen. So he ends up releasing the job and then through that we um, started a remodel project in our house. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, I am so grateful that we have all of this ability to just be in the flow like what is meant to be it was meant to be that he has been wanting desperately to do this project but when you have clients who want to pay you money you're not going to start a project and your wife likes the projects to be finished faster than they used to so she wants you to do it and not start it and leave it like the other bathroom that we had half done for 20 years <laughs> So that was not a possibility in our life this time. So it opened up this opportunity for him to start this project. And when I think about this concept of co-creation and the being in the flow and being in the moment and, and the, the work that we're doing as spiritual practitioners that Charles and Myrtle were new, these thoughts were, they're so common now. But when this concept started happening in the New Thought Movement, it was, it was like nothing anybody had heard in the Western world. It was so extraordinary to think that we were in co-creation, that we were one with God. Because that was blasphemous, to be honest, in some religions, to say you have connection, you are connected, you're, you're one of, you're part of. It was crazy. It's so in our, in our knowing now. We were talking before the service, Rebecca and I, that, that we were talking, and it was like, oh, that's what I think too. That's what I tell my, my clients too. I feel that, that knowing. And that knowing is reaching out to more people, and you start to talk to more people, and they, they're saying, they're reflecting knowings that you have. As a collective consciousness, we are raising our knowing. And we want the reflection from somebody else to um, not validate, but to, to, to reflect that it's like, yes, you're getting affirmation that that is true. Because we're all feeling and getting more transmissions because we are opening to this truth that we are indeed one with we are not separate from and when we come from this place we start to recognize that what is meant to be and what isn't meant to be is really a guide to us allowing ourselves to see that even the things that feel incredibly difficult and painful in our lives are part of a process of us learning and trusting that we are indeed not separate from Kate and I were talking on the drive up about childhood trauma. And Kate's my best friend. She's my friend. <laughs> and, you know, we've spent 10, 15 years as best friends talking about trauma and talking about the stuff that's happened in our life. And as we've progressed over these years in our friendship and in our spiritual journeys, it's interesting how, how the conversation 
you know, we know each other so well, and we've, we've experienced this life together. We're like sisters, you know? So it's like we know each other really well, but we're, and we're still working on healing and using each other as mirrors to understand how we got to what we got to. And that's what best friends are for. That's what your spiritual community is for. That's what your spiritual brothers and sisters is for. And recently, I was in a session with somebody who was abused as a three-year-old. And incredibly profound to work with people who have that level of trauma. And her question was, why? Why did this happen to me? And I think that when you come into the what was meant to be and not meant to be, and so Kate and I were talking about this as we've had things that happen in our lives. Why did that happen? Was that meant to be? Was that childhood trauma? Was that abuse that I had? Was that supposed to tell me something? What, what was I supposed to learn from that? Why did, why did I get that? And I think that the more that we open to spirituality and the more we open to this truth that we are human beings who have come into these bodies, but we are really spiritual energy centers having this incredibly complex experience with brains that think a very specific way and neurons that work a very specific way, that we're asking why in the same way of saying, I'm powerless over everything. That to truly start to let go of the, the demanding that we should know why is the same as saying, I want to know what was meant to be, and I want explanation, and I want certainty, and I want a reason. Bad things happen to good people. Hurt people hurt people. And this consciousness that we're raising right now is this opportunity for us to heal a collective that has been in pain for a very, very long time. And Rich and I watch a lot of historical fiction, and I was not all that into uh, school at all. And now that I'm into understanding and learning and I watch these things, it's like new, fresh eyes of how much pain we as human beings have been in for so long. And that really, in our lifetimes, in our lifetimes, we are shifting and changing in ways that has never happened before. And so this concept of like, this was meant to be, or this happened to me, and I didn't have anything to do with it, isn't about being a pinball. It's about just recognizing the complexity of being a human. And to stop asking why in the places where there is no understanding of why things happen. But moving into our spiritual center where we decide that in this present moment, today, right here, right now, you are going to be awake. Just like the call to sing the song and to actually feel it. To not just say it out of rote, but to understand that within you, in every moment, this is what they taught in the beginning of the New Thought Movement, your thoughts are powerful. Every thought that you think creates your life, the third unity principle, we are what we think and feel and believe that our lives are. So to truly understand that if something is meant to be, you are part of that. You are helping to create that by the thoughts that you have when you wake up in the morning and say it's going to be a crappy ass day. Guess what? Crappy ass day is what you get. <laughs> but you wake up in the morning and you say, I am open and ready to receive. I'm excited for what's to happen today. And then you allow the flow. My husband right now is working on the bathtub in this house, this new model. <coughs> Coming back to my remodel, he bought a bathtub from Wayfair. It, he built it to fit into this space. It continues to leak. Mm -hmm. Cannot get the fitting to not leak. Mm -hmm. And I'm profoundly impressed with how he's handling it. Mm -hmm. Because he's been on this journey with me. And we've, we're 
at 30 years of marriage this year. We're going to Indonesia next month for a whole month. On Saturday, we leave for a whole month to Indonesia wow. to celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary. And in the past, he would have tried to control the heck out of that. He would be angry. He'd be marching around the house upset. He'd be, how dare this happen to me? And he keeps saying, well, I guess it was meant to be that I needed to learn more about how this fitting works. Or, oh, oh, I'm really glad that happened because that taught me that this particular trap isn't the setup. I just listen to it. I don't really know what he's talking about, but I nod my head a lot and I say, I'm so glad you're so smart in figuring all this out. And I really think, you know, he could, this could be like the worst thing that was happening to him. He gets to decide whether it's going to be the worst thing that's happening to him or whether it's an opportunity for him to, to grow and to learn. And he said, um, I was also telling Kate this on the way down, that uh, he's having a shift in consciousness around money because he said, I'm actually enjoying doing this even though it's so hard. Mm. And, and usually I'm thinking, i got to get this done because i got to be making money. If I'm not making money, then I'm not... I'm not producing. And he said, there's something that happened where I thought, I'm curious and I want to get this done and I'm actually, Rachel, I'm actually trusting that the universe is going to be okay for us and this is okay. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> this concept of co-creating and being present with and being in this moment, in this, in this moment, right here in this moment, Letting go of yesterday, only holding on to the parts of yesterday that align with who you are in your true being, and letting the rest go. And moving into this knowing that what you think and feel in this moment, how connected you are to spirit and your spiritual being in this moment, is aligning you to the right and perfect thing going forward. And so when you feel good about something, you're like, that feels like it was really meant to be. And then when you hit that it wasn't meant to be, it's not the world or life hitting you in a negative way. It's really saying, turn. Turn in a new direction. If that relationship didn't work out, if that job didn't work out, if whatever it is, I have to think even bigger. I won't bring in other things, but you have to look bigger and you have to say, if the world isn't working out, if the climate isn't working out, if how we treat people and how we are as human beings is doesn't feel like it's meant to be, there has to be a reason. There has to be some flow. I have to trust that this is indeed part of it because our consciousness is raising. Because we are moving forward. So, where am I in time? How much time do I have? Oh, there's a time right there. Uh, okay, good. I get to keep talking. <laughs> I never know what I'm going to say. I do a lot of prep work and then I just totally let it go. <laughs> the guidance that continues to come through to me is around us releasing this need to make anything happen, to force anything to happen to really trust and believe that every moment of your life is an opening for you to choose happiness, to choose tenderness, to choose love, to choose um, passions, to choose play. And to let your mind actually begin to connect in this way that is deeper than ever before. That is the invitation that continues to come. Because we think that if it doesn't go a certain way, that it's not right. But if we allow ourselves to be in this not meant to be place, we can actually start to be more in the flow and allow it to open up even deeper. We're going to Indonesia on uh, Saturday, and we had this trip planned for uh, 2020. And my husband's a surfer and has been surfing um, 
since he was a kid in California and then has been landlocked in Colorado and then <laughs> discovered surfing on the rivers. So he's one of those crazy people who stand up paddle boards down um, class two and three rivers. But in the last um, maybe 10 or 15 years, we've been going to the coast more and he's been surfing more. And as this last six years, so I got sober six years ago and started the spiritual journey um, six years ago, and he's kind of been along for the ride, you know, he's he's not as sober as me, but he's more sober than he was, so that's good. And he's been on the on this spiritual ride, and what he's determined is that surfing, for him, is one of his most important things. And he didn't used to think that it was. So we found ways for that to happen. So we're going on this trip to Indonesia, and it got canceled in 2020, and this time coming up, he said, if I don't do it now, I'm going to age out of it because he's 57. Mm -hmm. And to be able to surf on that level, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, maybe we could afford it better three or four years from now. <laughs> no, we got to go now, you know. <laughs> and that's that like meant to be, that it's, that it's working out. It's the trusting that it's working out. And this is the most relaxed I've ever been about doing something this big. Mm -hmm. Because in the past, I wanted certainty and I wanted to know for sure and I wanted to make everything be perfect. And now I'm just allowing. I'm Every moment I'm just picturing how, um, not what it's gonna feel like or look like because I don't wanna limit myself in that, but I'm allowing myself to just feel how relaxed I'm gonna feel and how easy it's gonna be and how connecting it's gonna be with my husband and people there, and that the flights are gonna be easy. You know, I'm just, I'm just co-creating it, and I can't wait to see what happens. I can't wait. But I also am not, some people say, oh, it's a trip of a lifetime. I'm thinking, if these three weeks are my entire lifetime, I, you know, I've got bigger plans than that. So, you know, it's a really important three, three and a half weeks. So in all of this, as I'm rambling here at the end, I just want to bring back to this knowing that being human is an important part of your spiritual experience. We get caught up in it just wanting to be spiritual, but it is the human part that we're here for. It is the allowing of what is meant to be that we are part of creating. And it's also the allowing what you bump up against that doesn't feel meant to be, that is spirit directing you into a new direction. But to not give up the humanness, which includes the heartache, which includes the suffering, which includes the difficulty, and then really milking and opening up to and feeling the joys and the, the ease and the contentment and the happiness that is truly your birthright. And connect and let go of wanting to control anything outside of yourself. <laughs>